Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to the Sweetwater Minute. We have a special guest with us today. This is Glenn Coleman from Coleman Audio. Great to see you. Hi, how are you doing? Thanks for coming in. We appreciate you taking time out of your schedule. You've been here showing your products to the sales engineers. Yes. Nice. Yes. Nice. Yeah. So you make a whole range of products, and over the years, I, I, we were just talking earlier, and I think it's been about 20 years since yes. uh, since we actually first met, and, and I always thought of you as like the solutions guy. You like solve the problems well, for studio that's, guys. That's what's driven the company. I usually get all the ideas for products from customers that have problems. Right, so. right. And you're, you're well positioned to do that because you have a long history working with consoles and in pro recording studios. Yes, I uh, worked for a company called MCI back in the 70s. They built 24 tracks and large frame consoles. Right. And that's what I did. I checked out, did the final specs on the JH500s. And then later I did the service work for them. So they right. sent me around the world. I was crawling around studios for a long time. Right. Well, that's a great experience and background to bring to what you do because you know the way studios work and you know what yes. actually goes on there. So are you a musician yourself? Are you an engineer? How did you get into this? Uh, I love music. Uh, it, when I was younger, I realized I couldn't play the guitar. I have yeah. started again, but oh, good. It's, uh, it's a battle now. There's <laughs> not enough time. Yeah, right. right. Uh, but then I, I, after I left MCI, I went to Atlantic Records in New York and uh, the engineers were always asking for a pair of meters in Studio B or a switcher network or some kind of added on thing. Right. So I was building those things. And after Atlantic, I worked at a place called Martin Audio and they sold Otari products and things like that. It was a, it was a like a Sweetwater, but very, very scaled down. Right. And uh, then they went away and I was doing service work and a friend of mine called me and said, look, you know, I know you build stuff. If you build it, we'll sell it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started building products right. with uh, meters and then alternate speaker switching and then control room monitors. Right, right. And on and on. Yeah, yeah. So obviously the, uh, the industry has changed dramatically from the days of MCI consoles and analog tape yes. machines to where we are now with computer-based things. Yes. Tell us a little bit about how you've seen the technology and your approach to that technology evolve through those years. Well, the, in the old days when there was tape and uh, consoles and stuff, uh, it was very expensive to get into the, the game mm -hmm. of being a recording studio. Uh, now it's a lot easier, you know, it, the cost isn't as much, um, but it tends to make people jump into the game without really knowing what they're doing mm -hmm. and struggling along the way and to learn, you know. Right. Uh, but everything changed. When it went into the computer, everything got small. You didn't need the large frame console. You didn't need tape decks. You didn't need anything like that. You could do it with a computer or nowadays even a laptop right. and a couple of speakers and a microphone. and you can do it in your apartment. Right, right. But that has also provided companies like yours yes. with an opportunity yes. to create new products that serve the needs and again yeah. provide solutions for those type of studios because even though you can do everything in the box in your laptop, going outside the laptop yes. is where, well, that's, where it becomes important. Yeah, I kind of, my products kind of live between the D to A and the speakers. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you're switching speakers, comparing mixes on different speakers, or you have a level control for your own speakers. And with the, the uh, digital signals that are so hot these days, you really just want to turn it down. You're not looking to get any gain out of the thing, mm -hmm. but you have to turn it down accurately and try not to color the sound on the way to the speaker so you know what you really got. Right, right. Uh, speaking of turning down the signal, um, it's interesting to me that your products are basically passive. If products. I can do it, yes. Yeah, now what does that mean? Uh, passive uh, means that they'll work without the power on. Uh, there's no electronics in the way. And when there's no uh, electronics, there's no noise from a power supply. Uh, be it as low as it is, mm -hmm. it's still there. And uh, also there's no coloration because if you have active electronics, there's always that line of, uh, on the spec sheet that says frequency response. Right. And uh, if it's passive, what goes in comes out. It doesn't really matter, it can be 40K. Your dog will hear it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll perceive it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're only 20 to 20K, it's not that you've colored the sound, but there is something that's not there. Mm -hmm. 
Right. You mentioned that you want to be able to accurately turn that down. Why is that important? Uh, well, you don't want the balance of the stereo image to shift as it goes down, and it's hard to track. Mm -hmm. uh, generally speaking, in the, in the old days, you had sweet pots, and they were accurate when you turned them down. Uh, nowadays, that's a very expensive thing to build, mm -hmm. and, and Borns and companies, they, they don't want to build it. Uh, so I use a stepped attenuator. It's all 1% resistors, and it's an actual switch. And since it's 1% resistors, it tracks to 0 0.05 dB. So the balance mm -hmm. is always going to be maintained, no matter if it's a very low level or all the way up. Right, right. So coming from the background of MCI consoles and all of the analog work that you did in those, those days, uh, a big part of what those, those devices and mixers and everything provided was, was coloration. I yes. Mean, and, um, and that's, that's something that, that analog kind yes. of a, kind of a sound, analog sound is still, sound, still yeah. desirable for, for, for people. What kind of things can people do to, to get that kind of sound when they are working in mostly a, an in-the-box well, uh, scenario? If you're in the box and you want an analog sound for your mix, uh, a summing box would be a way of getting an analog sound. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily the coloration of a particular console or a sound, although some, some do that. Mm -hmm. uh, my RED48 is a, has the analog sound, but it's a transparent uh, signal path. It's not right. really gonna color the sound to match a Neve or an API or, or some other console. Right, but it still gives you the benefits of the summing analog all that summing, in the analog yes, domain. Yes, right, there is a difference. But it also provides a lot of other functionality. Oh uh, yes, this as well. is a summing console. Yeah. Right, right. So it has a, basically a, a center section from a console. Or it a does. A control room monitor, talkback functions, uh, and forty-eight channels of summing. So right, right. All in all in one place. That's that's pretty amazing. So. You have, uh, again, worked on a, a wide range of products, and, and some of the things you've been coming out with uh, lately have been more mastering-oriented. Uh, you've well, done some EQs and yes, things. I, so what is the difference between a production box that you might build and a mastering box that you might build? Uh, well, no, the products that I build are, are production products. Mm -hmm. uh, the equalizer uh, was taken from an MCI console. It's okay. a vintage equalizer from the console, the JH528. Uh, Everybody else is copying Neves and copying APIs and stuff, and I felt like it was a very good equalizer. Mm -hmm. So I know the circuit. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Couldn't forget it if I had to. Yeah, bad try. Honest, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I researched the parts, and uh, a lot of them were available. Some of them I had to have made custom, but uh, most of them were available. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so I recreated that equalizer. Mm -hmm. And that's another example of a way that you could bring that analog oh, yes. kind of sound yes. into your into your digital yes. productions because it is obviously going to have that kind of a, a thumbprint, if you will, of course, to, to what's going on there. So, so with all the products that you come out with, I'm always curious when I talk to uh, to someone like yourself, where do you get your ideas for new products? Always from the customer. Yeah, uh, it's driven by that. That's why trade sales are so important. You you talk to people, they have an, a problem and it's an issue and and they state the problem and you start thinking about it and you come up with a solution for the problem. And, right. and if, it's, if it's something that I feel like everybody is experiencing this, then I make a product. If it's just one guy, maybe I'll make a custom box for him. You know, I do do custom work. Mm -hmm. It's right. hard to fit it in these days, I but imagine uh, so, yeah. yeah, it, it is uh, a possibility. Right, right. So are there things you'll say no to? Uh, I'm an analog guy. I don't have any digits in my boxes. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't really program, and I don't do that kind of a thing. So right. if it's analog, switching and such, I can make it go from here to there, and it won't lose any sound, you know. Right, right, sure. Well, that's awesome. And what's coming up? What's next? Ah, uh, well, I don't have anything in the future at the moment, but... Uh -huh. uh, because you've been working I'm, on, yes, on some I, big projects. Uh, yeah, I've got uh, that and the equalizer, and... Uh, It'll come though. There'll sure. be somebody that has a problem. Right, right. So whatever the next solution is, that yeah, I try and I always try to figure out a way to make it easier, you know, or save time. Those mm -hmm. are the things. The problem-solving devices are what sells. Right, right. Absolutely. Glenn, thanks so much for sitting down with us today and, and uh, telling us about the company, sure. and your background, and everything. You really have a long, rich history in the, uh, the analog side of things, and it's so cool that you're continuing to provide that to, yes, to today's uh, today's musicians We're and engineers. Thanks. So. Great to see you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in. All righty. And thanks for joining me for the Sweetwater Minute. I'm Mitch Gallagher.